All Lydia had left of her late mother was her old ring. For 25 years after her mother's passing, she wore the ring everything but had no idea about the real story behind it. But when Lydia took a bad fall, breaking the ring in the process, she brought it to a local jewelry store. Only then would the truth about her mother's ring be revealed to her. With tears welling up in her eyes and a broken ring in her hand, Lydia stumbled into the local jewelry shop. Nobody was there except for the employee standing behind the counter, who could immediately tell that something was wrong. Lydia explained how her mother's precious ring had broken and prayed that the employee would be able to fix it. But instead of thinking about the reparation, the employee closely inspected the ring and seemed to have a look of recognition in his eyes. Then he knew. He had seen this ring before, and when he revealed to Lydia where this was, her jaw dropped. Her mother had lied to her all this time. She could not believe it, but there was no doubt he was telling the truth. But what did the jeweler reveal to Lydia? What was the true story behind the ring, and how would it turn Lydia's life upside down? Before we start, can we get this video to 1000 likes? Please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Lydia is now happily married to John. They live a somewhat regular life, but they do struggle a bit financially. Lydia has had a difficult life. She was an only child and had a very good relationship with her mother, Sarah, because they always had to do everything together. Her father had never really been the picture, and this had a pretty big effect on Lydia when she was young. Lydia's whole childhood felt like a battle she fought alongside her mother. While she was in school, her mother worked two jobs in order to provide for them and when Lydia was old enough, she managed to get a job as well to fill up her free hours in the week. It might have been a struggle every day, but the pair seemed to make it work. For a long time, it felt like all they had in the world was each other, and this created an incredibly strong bond between them. Lydia, however, did find the time for a little bit of romance in her life. She met her boyfriend John on the job and they started to really connect with each other quickly. Lydia and Sara were both saving up as much money as they could. This was all to give Lydia a chance to move out of the house when she was ready. Sara wanted nothing more than to give her only child the best life possible. But then the unthinkable happened. Sara suddenly got very sick when Lydia was around 24 years old. Doctors found it difficult to determine what exactly was wrong with her and Sara's condition quickly went down up. Their lives were crashing down around them. All of the savings Lydia and Sara had gone to Lydia's treatment. But sadly, it didn't seem to matter. After only a few weeks, it was clear that Sara was not going to make it through. Because the doctors had been unable to determine what she was suffering from, all they could do was treat the symptoms and make Sara more comfortable. Lydia had to say goodbye to her mother and best friend. It was extremely hard for Lydia to get through this period. She had to take care of a lot of things, being the only child and the only family that really seemed to care. Sara had not been in close contact with other family members as she felt they never tried to help when she was struggling. With so much weight on Lydia's shoulders, it was a miracle that she did not crack under the pressure. The main reason she managed to make it through was with a lot of help from her boyfriend, John. He had been there every step of the way, and it made them even closer than before. After her mother had passed away, a lot of things had to be taken care of. The funeral was the first thing that had to be organized. It was a sober goodbye with only a small gathering. It was an open casket, and the moment Sara's sister saw her, she made a comment that would turn a lot of heads. Sara's sister noticed that she was not wearing the ring she always had on. Lydia had not even thought about this in all the craziness. But now it was too late to even go looking for it. In the grand scheme of things, it just didn't seem that important. Lydia had no idea how wrong she would be about this. Even though it was a sober ordeal, Lydia did manage to say goodbye to her mother in a satisfying way. After the funeral, the next major thing that had to be taken care of was the inheritance. Sara was not rich in the slightest bit and before her passing, she had documented that everything she owned would be left to Lydia. And there was one thing Lydia did really want to find. The comment made at the funeral about her mother's ring had stuck with her. Ever since then, 
Lydia knew she had to find it, as it was probably the item that had the most sentimental value to her. Sara had worn it nearly every day, but finding it was turning out to be more of a burden than a blessing. Sara didn't own a house, she just rented it, and she barely had any money saved, even less than Lydia had expected. All of Sara's money had either already gone into Lydia's pocket in order to help her move out or to all the treatment she needed in her final weeks. Many of the items still left in the house, like furniture and clothing, went to thrift stores. Lydia had no need for most of it. Lydia did find a couple of items she wanted to keep that had some sentimental value. She desperately kept looking for the ring. Finally, she found it. Lydia knew that this ring had a story. Her mother had always told her that she had stolen it when she was just a little girl. Apparently, when Sara was only 12, she had a job cleaning houses for people. This made her a little bit of money that was needed to keep her household going. She used to hit Sara every time she would do something that was not to her satisfaction. This went on for a couple of months as Sara could not leave at the time. She had no other houses to work at and she really needed the money. But this treatment started taking its toll on little Sara. But during all this, Sara was constantly looking for other work or other places to clean. And when Sara finally had another house to work in, she quickly quit the job, but not before stealing a ring she had found on her last day. It was her way of taking a little bit of revenge. Lydia had always taken this story as the truth and loved it when she was younger. It had made her see her mother as a badass and someone who was not afraid. It was an example she had always wanted to follow. But Libya would eventually find out that this was not the whole story. Sara has always worn the ring proudly as a reminder of when she stood up for herself and now Lydia would be wearing it as a reminder of her mother. Almost all other things she kept from Sara either disappeared in drawers and the shed or were sold after a while. Even though Lydia loved the story of the ring, it had always seemed a bit strange and even far-fetched to Lydia, especially the more she started thinking about it. She never saw her mother as the type to do something against the rules or steal anything. Something wasn't adding up. Lydia had, of course, only known Sara in a motherly role, so it was not that strange to think Sara might have been very different before she became a mother. Lydia decided to not think about it too much. But the truth can never be hidden forever and would soon be unexpectedly revealed to Lydia. Lydia had to move on with her life. Luckily, she still had John. While they probably had the peak months of their relationship in the worst possible time, they'd end up staying together and only grew closer through everything that Lydia had to go through. Closer in more ways than one. Not even a year after Sara had passed, the couple had their first child, Sammy. Lydia quickly found out that having a child was the best way to fill the void her mother left in a healthy way. The things she attempted before she got pregnant were a lot less healthy. Lydia had turned to alcohol in the first months after her mother's passing. It was starting to become a big problem really fast because of her. It started to feel like the only escape from her thoughts at the time. But the pregnancy turned out to be a blessing in more ways than one. Lydia gave up the bottle immediately when she found out the news because she wanted to take no risks with the baby on the way. But she had to find a new release in the meantime. Lydia had gotten used to turning to alcohol every time a wave of sadness came over her. At this point, even if the sadness was not related to her mother's passing, being unable to do so, plus her becoming more and more hormonal during the pregnancy, made her an absolute wreck for months on end. They were some of the toughest months of Lydia's life, which again had not been easy up to this point anyway. But with the birth of their child, things finally started to look up for the couple. As a replacement for alcohol, Lydia started to work out more and more. It was something she really enjoyed doing and she thought that it would only have benefits for her, which it did at first. Lydia was able to see the benefits of getting healthier but eventually working out would have an unexpected consequence for Lydia. Over the next couple of years, the life of the family was relatively good. Sammy was growing up in good health, Lydia and John had finally saved up enough money to get married and were still extremely happy together. 
but just like the rest of Lydia's life, a big speed bump was about to appear on her path. After so many years, Sammy was grown up and ready to leave the house. It was a moment that Lydia was dreading very much. This because caring for Sammy had been her main purpose in life for years on end now, and she was afraid of what this major change in lifestyle would bring. If the story was correct, it would mean that her mother had stolen the ring in 1952. But the techniques that were used to make this ring were only applied past 1968. This was the earliest that this ring could have been produced. Lydia was stunned by what she was being told. The jeweler went on and on about the ring, giving Lydia more details and arguments as to why it was impossible for that ring to be from anywhere near that time period. Then suddenly, while telling his story, the jewelry store employee had a realization and stopped talking. His eyes went wide and he went to go look for something. He quickly went in the back and took out a small old book. It was a catalog of items they had in the store, but this was a catalog from the year 1968. He looked through a couple of pages and turned the book to Lydia. She could not believe what she was seeing on its pages. It was her mother's ring. But how? The jeweler proclaimed that this was how he knew the ring. This model had been produced by their store, but far before his time. And when he was in the back, he also did some digging through the store's archives and made a bizarre discovery. This exact ring had been stolen from their store in 1969. He knew that it was this exact ring because the serial number matched up. Lydia could not believe what she was hearing. Her mother had stolen the ring from this store, but why? And then the realization came to her. 1969 was the year when she was born. Her father had left her mother, and she had already been strapped for cash when he was in the picture. She must have started stealing out of desperation. Sarah must have done it for Lydia. But the store clerk had one more thing to say. It was the first positive message of the conversation. He would allow Lydia to keep the ring. The crime happened so long ago that the police wouldn't do anything about it if he tried. But even if they would, he had no intention of taking the ring away from her. He realized the sentimental value that it has to Lydia is way greater than any monetary value it would have to him. And luckily for Lydia, the jeweler was able to make that call because it was now his store. He even offered to repair the ring and restore it to its original quality for free. Lydia could not be happier, but she was still left with the question of what else her mother had stolen and what other secrets she was unaware of. She had to make peace with the fact that there would always be a lot about her mother that she would never know. But what she did know, and actually had always known, is that there was nothing that her mother would not do for her, and knowing that made this ring even more special to her.